live from the Central Scranton Expressway, part of Southside Scranton. A real happening place if you just happen to be buying drugs, drinking a 40, renting from a slumlord, or just happen to have just bought an illegal license saying your name's really John Smith. It's time for Frank the Lunatic Rants! Yet again. Can't see me too good because, ooh, the sun's in my eyes there. Look at that, sun's in the eyes. Or like that. Maybe that's a little better. But see, then the sun's in my eyes. Anyhow. So, it's time to rant again. That's right, people, you get to live with me ranting yet again. So, I'm going to rant about something that I saw just the other day. I'm going to rant about hybrid vehicles. Not just hybrid vehicles, but, damn son, but fully electric vehicles. And of course I have an audience in the back there that wants me to rant about something else. Wires. Wires. Uh-huh. Maybe later. Anyway, so, these electric vehicles. The other day I was, uh, happened to be walking around, uh, Scranton there. And, uh, I was going down this one block. I happened to notice a big electric cord going to this thing on the ground with this super big cord coming out of it. And it was going to a Nissan Leaf. It's a fully electric car. And where the hood is, is this little compartment that pops up, and you push the plug in. And basically, uh, your extension cord goes into this power converter, you know, to convert the AC over to DC so you can charge up your car. Okay, well, interesting concept, the Nissan lease, uh, Leaf. But I bitched about this car a long time ago when they first proposed it. It's a semi-stupid concept. It's a small car. If I remember correctly, it's like 40 something thousand dollars for this little tiny car. And it's all electric. Fine and dandy if you have places to plug it in all the time because you only have a certain many mile range with these things. So there's no charging stations around. So it's really that beneficial. You can't really take long trips with these things at all. You know, maybe for a commuter car, but depending on how many miles you have to commute couple of drawbacks about the stupid car. Well, first of all, the price and size, but your money savings. You know, you're spending 40 something thousand dollars for a car that you're never going to get a return on your investment on. Because even magazines like Consumer Reports basically say how, you know, you're going to keep a vehicle like that literally by the time you pay you up the loan, maybe eight to ten years, you'll actually start recuperating back some of the money you saved from fuel. Eight to ten years. Life expectancy of the batteries on these cars, 8 to 10 years. So by the time you actually start recouping some of your money, it's time to replace the battery pack for a couple of thousand dollars. And wait a, you know, wait a couple months for it to ship over from overseas. Other drawback. What exactly are you saving? You know, there are people, you know, I'm not saying I'm a tree hugger. I like the environment, I do my part, I recycle, I sort, you know, I, there's things I do. But I, I don't see myself running out to buy one of these vehicles. Because what are you really saving? Not much. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna save on, you know, oil and that, because it's, you know, and gas. Okay, but how are you charging your car up? You're plugging it into your house electric. Where does your electricity come from? Well, unless it's coming from a nuclear power plant where basically if you live in Pennsylvania, it is not because our nuclear power plant does not supply electricity to Pennsylvania. So guess what? You're getting your electricity from a plant that's either coal generated or oil generated. What did you save? You didn't really save the environment anything. Because guess what? It's still burning oil or coal and the fumes are still going in the air to produce the extra electricity that it takes to go to your house to charge up this vehicle. So that 
you can get your electric bill at the end of each month and piss and moan because your electric bill is as much as your damn car payment for the car that's supposed to have saved you money. And it never really did. Don't really get the purpose of it. And if you're someone that really God doesn't drive far, well then, you, of course, you never really get the full potential of your vehicle. And you never, ever, ever recoup your money savings on gas whatsoever. Only people I see bet these cars really benefiting, honestly, businesses. Why? Because, A, tax deduction. These expensive cars, they get to write off this stuff as a business expense. Not only that, but the electricity that they use to charge up this vehicle at their place of business, they can deduct as a business expense. Then, throw in the fact that they get deducted mileage and wear and tear, it's a win-win situation for them. Plus the fact that as a business, they're probably paying less in electricity per kilowatt than you and I do because business commercial... Excuse me. Business commercial rates are generally cheaper. And the interest rates for loans are generally cheaper. They're the only ones making ahead. I'm sorry, but spending 40-something thousand just doesn't cut it for me. Sort of like the Chevy Volt, which was supposed to be an all-electric vehicle. And Chevy decided, hey, this ain't gonna work. So they decided to put a little putt-putt engine in there, golf car engine or something like that. But even that car is 40-something thousand. For a rinky-dink car. That's not impressive whatsoever. Want to impress me? Make a freaking electric car that actually has power. And to all those jam bags out there that say it can't be done, hello, first of all, Tesla, while I'm not a big fan of Tesla, their cars do have power and torque. And better yet, Lamborghini had a test car that they came out with, and I think Ferrari might have too. All electric. Not only all electric, but there were solar panels on the car to help recharge the battery a little bit while the car is sitting. It helps uh, keep the, you know, the computer and everything all still charged up and everything instead of running off the batteries when it's sitting. And guess what? That car went vroom! It actually moved. But yet you buy one of these electric cars. I mean, even a Prius, okay, you know, when you eventually get up to highway speed, yes, it can hold its own. But that's once you get up to speed. Because they just don't have the torque. But yet, the Obimbo administration just has this whole thing that, you know, first of all, everybody has to be forced into these cars by a certain year. Because after a certain year, places like California, that for example, for you to be able to sell gasoline cars in your state, the uh, companies have to be able to sell, like prove that they're selling so many cars that are hybrids and everything. They have to manufacture so many and sell so many in order to be able to continue to make gasoline cars. It's like such a crock of shit, basically. But they want to force people to have to buy all these expensive ass cars because supposedly we're really saving the environment. Guess what? Unless you have a big ass sail sitting on the top of your vehicle that you're using wind power or your car is totally solar powered, you ain't saving jack. A hybrid is still using gas and a fully electric car still has to get plugged in that's going to use coal or oil. So what did you save? Absolutely zilch. You just saved the job of the salesman who sold you that expensive ass car. That's basically it. So really, give us affordable electric cars or hybrids. Give us stuff that actually has performance. Maybe then people will actually consider this stuff. But personally, a car that only operates, you know, at 30 miles an hour on electric or maybe even 40 doesn't bring you that much of a savings whatsoever. Can't think of anything else to rant about on that subject. So that, my friends, is basically 